Day two of the multiplayer beta is here, but things are still getting started. Over the course of the next few days, we'll see more content added for modes, maps perhaps, and maybe even a new level cap increase for weekend one here, while the next week everyone will have the chance to play the game, and we'll have that full beta experience available by the end of it. Today though, I want to take a look at a few tips that I've gained from quite a bit of playtime already from COD Next, as well as the first 24 to 36 hours here, because while this game is a successor to Modern Warfare 2019, it's got some significant differences that you want to make sure you're aware of to do your best in-game. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. This is by no means my definitive tips list. We'll have a much more full tips video for launch when the entire game is released. Obviously, in a condensed beta build, we only have so much to work with, but as we go along, feel free to drop your thoughts. And if you have anything you'd like to add, feel free to. But if you enjoy the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2. We've got so much on the horizon from the beta here to the full launch in just over a month's time to now, even also with Season 1 and the Warzone 2.0 and DMZ launch coming in just under two months time. So if you want to be here for all of it while helping us out on that road to half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, check out my friends over at G Fuel who have bumped up code Espresso to 30% off your entire order in celebration of the beta launches. Flavors like Hype Sauce, Pink Drip, the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Strawberry Banana. Can't go wrong with any of those. So if you're interested, links in the description below and make sure to use code Espresso. But anyways, let's talk about some of these tips to improve your gameplay and do better in the beta. Now, before we jump into anything in particular with the game, of course, both on PlayStation and come Xbox and PC next weekend, you want to make sure that you have some settings right. The user interface, the settings on offer here is of course a little bit different than what we may be used to, but as always, you want to start out with some of the basics, your button layout, your sensitivity. Personally for me, I've always played on tactical. 9.9 is that horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity. That's something that's entirely subjective and entirely up to you. Auto sprint behavior, if you want to end up having something where you just push forward and you automatically tack sprint, you can. If you just want to go into a regular sprint, you can, or you can turn it off. Controller settings though, this year it might be a little bit more important with some of these things. If you want to try and replicate the slide canceling, some pros have already found a way to semi-replicate the slide canceling of old. Not quite entirely, but it does give you a little bit of where you were at beforehand, as opposed to the base slide here within the beta. For that, you'll want things like your weapon mount activation to be set to ADS. Some people are saying double tap ADS, but really it comes down to feeling out which one. You'll want your grounded mantle off, automatic airborne mantle off, and automatic ground mantle off as well. Now, for players that don't necessarily care too much about movement, the big thing out of the advanced setting for controller is the aim response curve type. You have your standard, linear, and dynamic. I've always recommended dynamic. It's a reverse S-curve mapping for fine aim rate control. It's just a little bit more precision in terms of that. So if you're a good shot, dynamic is definitely something you want to be using. So make sure you have that set on as well. Now, graphic settings are also something we can take a look at here because you'll have things like your on-demand texture streaming. If you're worried about your bandwidth or any connectivity in game, you can turn this off. This is something that really comes down to a case-by-case -case basis. So I can't really recommend it. I don't know your internet speeds or the bandwidth you have available. So that's something to at least consider. Motion blur, I'd always suggest taking world and weapon both off. It's something if you pan your camera from side to side, you'll be able to end up seeing players more clearly as opposed to if there's a motion blur enabled for whenever you swipe by. Film grain, I drop depth of field. That's up to you. If you want to be more hyper-focused on your ADS viewpoint, it's not bad, but if you want to keep an eye on your peripherals as well, I'd say turn it off. And field of view, for the first time, console players have Field of View as an option in the Modern Warfare franchise. About time, right? We saw it in Vanguard, we saw it in Black Ops Cold War on consoles, but we finally now have it in a Modern Warfare game. Now, this is all preference. Take your pick. I've always played it like 105 to 120 on PC, so it's something that does offer quite a bit of advantage in terms of your viewpoint and what you can see in your peripherals the higher you go, but it's also something that could end up warping that viewpoint of the effect where it might make you a little bit motion sick. It could end up dropping some performance on PlayStation for. But the one that is very important here, regardless of what you set it at, is to end up expanding that field of view setting and set your ADS field of view to affected. This ends up scaling your ADS to whatever FOV you have, and it doesn't necessarily just default back to that 80 FOV ADS viewpoint, which could end up pulling you into the point where you don't see much on those peripherals, but also it ends up actually making your visual recoil easier to control because you're not so zoomed in. So it feels like you have a little bit more control while the recoil, of course, is still there. It just keeps you on target and looking at at that enemy a little easier. So set up out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the actual in-game experience. First and foremost, the pacing of this game is different. It's going to be seemingly slower than Modern Warfare 2019, or at least what we have right now. We talked about this in the initial review video of the game where I was saying where what we played at Next probably wasn't going to be the general experience for all players. Myself and the others at COD Next playing against other creators and pros, all trying to rush around and grab footage for impressive gameplays or whatever, makes for a drastically different feel and gameplay 
gameplay experience because I'm sure that you've already experienced quite a few players sitting in corners or pre-aiming everything in that public realm of the game. That's just the divide we're bound to have whenever we showcase gameplay from 200-ish similar creators versus the hundreds of thousands to millions of players over the course of the next two weeks or so that may log on that don't care about getting good or impressive gameplays. They just want to play their life and their streaks, which to each their own. There's no shame in either of those. But as a result, strafing and having your gun up is a huge tip and advantage here in this game. Unfortunately, without slide cancel, you can't really sprint around the map, break a camera and get a gun up before somebody can even track you. So until there is a proper broken movement mechanic here that somebody figures out that makes it as easy as slide canceling, having that gun up and getting that first shot off is integral to winning gunfights. It could quite literally be the difference between keeping that streak alive and having it end. Now, if strafing corners, slow peeking stuff isn't quite necessarily your style, you want to play a little bit more faster paced, jumping, going into bunny hops is probably going to be one of the movement mechanics of choice here going into this year. That or running, stopping, and then taking a corner engagement, that's probably your best bets. You don't want to go into corners blind. You don't want to turn corners, turn down different hallways. You want to have that gun ready to go just in case there is somebody there, but you can do it in either a little bit more passive or aggressive type manner. And why it's also so important here to have that gun up and maybe strafe around corners as opposed to sprinting around them or even walking around them is because the TTK in this game is wild. To me, I haven't broken it down in particular to get the analytical data on it, but it seems faster than Modern Warfare 2019, which is kind of crazy because that was a total twitch shooter of a TTK. You end up landing two, three shots, you end up getting that kill. Now, what makes it even crazier with this game is that it seems like the headshot multiplier is rather ridiculous and mix that in with the flinch and then the TTK, well, you're going to have a ton of you kick headshots, which if you're not familiar, it's usually a term that's derived from the sort of accidental free kills that happen when you shoot back at an enemy and you end up just kicking up after that flinch takes effect and hitting their head. Normally, aiming for the head is exactly what I do, but honestly, if you're aiming for the chest and neck, you probably should be good in this game unless something changes, because if you get hit even once, your aim will kick up as you're shooting and then hopefully hit a headshot, which again, then brings in that multiplier, which becomes unreal. So TTK is is wild have that gun up make sure you're accurate and try and aim for those chests and necks and if you can do all that get your first shot off you should be guaranteed to win most of those gunfights now the next thing that i would suggest here in terms of doing better is a general awareness tip be aware of that map flow and the dead space we can't see enemies on the radar while they're firing an unsuppressed weapon this year which i don't get going a step backwards here again but i'm not making the big bucks so it is just what it is it seems like hopefully it's changed but in the meantime pay attention to that dead space if you're around three to four other teammates in an area there's a higher probability that you'll be safe. But if you end up looking at your minimap and you see your arrow all alone with the teammates' arrows at the edge of that minimap, denoting that they're incredibly far, you might just be in enemy territory, maybe even in their spawn. So while not red dot chasing, as Infinity Ward would put it, do make sure you're keeping an eye out on that general area of the minimap, who's around you or who isn't around you, more importantly. Next, pay attention and learn the new gunsmith with progression trees for all platforms. Right now, as it stands, as of recording this, level 15 is that cap, so we don't have a ton of weapons to play with in the beta right now. We got a decent amount across the board in terms of the M4 platform, where you have an assault rifle, battle rifle, SMG, and LMG variant of the M4. But come a level cap increase and continued support into next, we will have more weapons, but it seems like we'll have so much more on offer as the year goes by. But the big part that we talked about in yesterday's video is that if you're looking for a certain attachment, they they are tethered to certain variants and sort of platform weapons that might not be that mainline base weapons attachment. The one that I used as an example as of yesterday was the red dot sight. That's something that myself and so many other people want, but it's effectively through like 31 levels of leveling your M4. It is the level three unlock of the FSS Hurricane variant in which you have to rank up the FTAC Recon Battle Rifle to level 15. And to get the FTAC Battle Rifle, you have to get the base M4 to level 12. So it's a sort of chain reaction action and succession that you have to follow to get certain attachments. If you want to end up seeing where those will be, you can end up going into the progression tab and seeing that weapon tree and taking a look at all of the attachments through all of the different builds that you'd have to play and progress. So just know that there is a lot more in depth and it's not necessarily as easy to unlock certain attachments that you might be looking for. Also, again, if you want to play around with it a little bit earlier, if you want to play with the Lockman Mirror weapon platform, that's currently locked right now behind level 16. But if you end up equipping the 
Expedite 12 shotgun as your primary, putting on overkill. It will then put on what is a random weapon as that secondary that is a primary since it's overkill. But the Expedite 12 is usually that default for the secondary spot. So when you put it as your primary choice, it defaults to a different weapon, which is the Lockman 556, the rifle variation of the Lockman Mir weapon platform. Many of you can progress that ahead of schedule here. So check that out. Crafting your class is also just as important as your gunplay as well as map awareness. Things like your tactical and lethal as well as perk package can make the biggest difference here in game and you might not even realize it. Right now, I'd say, especially with the level cap, what we have is the best tacticals is the stun grenade and perhaps the shock stick as well. The stun grenades, I definitely think will be nerfed. I think that it's something that lasts way too long. I think it's about like a seven second stun time or something like that in close proximity. So you're essentially just accepting your fate at that point and can get ready to go on to your next life. Your lethals, you have a little bit more to work with right now. I'd say the Semtex is definitely the best option though, in my opinion, maybe Thermite, but the drill charge can make for some cool experiences, but your perk package is really where it's going to come down to it. Of course, your base perks, you don't have a whole ton to work with by comparison to the entire perks on offer, and this is all entirely subjective, though if I'm honest with you, I'd say double time is probably the one that I would go for and recommend the most, simply because it increases the duration of that attack sprint and also increases your crouch movement speed by 30%, so allows you to have a little bit more mobility around that map a little bit quicker. But again, entirely up to you. For your bonus, I definitely recommend Fast Hands, Quick Fix, or Focus. Fast Hands, of course, speeding up that reload, definitely needed within this game. Quick Fix can really help out if you secure a kill and you end up having to take something shortly thereafter, but you need to regen your health because it gets it up quicker. And Focus, that of course reduces flinch when aiming down sight, which is huge in gunfights. So that might be a crutch perk. As for your ultimate, to me, it'd be High Alert, Ghost, and maybe Bird's Eye as the most important, but again, entirely subjective. This new perk design, though, definitely is something that influences the fundamental design decisions here and how you should be conscious of going into your gameplay. So you got to kind of think ahead a little bit as well. What do you want at the base, but what do you want to earn over time? For me, I like high alert because if I somehow get on a streak, well, then I can earn that high alert and it'll let me get a little bit more information come later on down the line. That could really come in handy if you go on like a 15 streak or something like that and you're trying to push towards a right now non-existent nuke in the beta, but will be there at launch, presumably. So make sure you're crafting accordingly. Beyond that though, one thing that I would definitely recommend is partying up. Playing solo has not really been the move the last couple of years. So if you have the opportunity, play with a squad of either one, two, three, four, maybe even all the way up to five for a full six man party. The more eyes you have to be able to spot enemies, track those rotations and all things like that can really just help your overall gameplay experience. Communication in the last couple of years has absolutely become key in doing better in Call of Duty. So if at all possible, try to party up so you end up having that extra communication. The final thing that I'll say here is to try everything out. This not necessarily being so much of an in-game tip to do better, but more so just to experience it all. Maybe there is something you find that you don't quite expect that you'll really like or helps you out in-game. And if you haven't played the game yet, you're on PlayStation, you don't know if you want to pick up the game or not, try it out when it goes to the free open beta upcoming, and then next week do the same as well. You got nothing to lose by simply trying out the game when it is in its free state, so may as well give it a go. But for now, that's where we're at. Again, we'll have a more in-depth tip breakdown and everything for launch, but I want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on some things you just know here going into this beta weekend and into next. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you guys have any tips you would like to add to this list? Anything that you guys are enjoying, disliking? What are the case about the game so far? Feel free to drop it. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it out insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.